Oh, so many early arrivals too. This bodes well. So we won't get started until um, it's actually probably a little bit after two o'clock, but I do just want everyone to know right off that we are recording the meeting. Um, there have been some folks who've asked um, if we would because they weren't able to make it today. Um, so I just wanted to let you all know that this will be recorded and we'll make it available to anyone who um, is interested in seeing the presentation uh, either again or couldn't be here today. Let's see. Hello, Kathleen. Hi, I'm taking a welcome break from painting. <laughs> well, it is a very, very pleasant surprise to uh, to see you pop up here today. You are you're up to make sure you're minding your on the straight and narrow, except not really. <laughs> <laughs> More like the broad and windy. <laughs> oh, you got John Mayer. You must be doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a dramatic background, too. I have no idea what you're talking about. Everything is just fine. The plane will not crash. <laughs> All right, that that really sets the mind at ease for a, a presentation that's going to go well, doesn't it, Alex? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll find you something calming. Here we go. Uh, here, Ch chomp, chomping beavers. <laughs> Oops, there we go. You're going to fit right in in this presentation, John. <laughs> This has got to be record early turnout. All right. Well, it is two o'clock. Um, as I said before, we're probably not going to get started right at two. We'll let people trickle in, although you all have proven to be an exceptionally early group. So thank you for all being here. Um, and I will mention again, we are recording this meeting. Um, there have been some folks who've requested that they won't be able to make it today. So we're recording it. And if you would um, like that recording, just let me know. Um, we're happy to provide it. Uh -huh. All right, let's see, do we still have people joining? Still have some folks connecting to the audio. So we'll give them just another minute here. I'll take inspiration from David Colarusso's policy of waiting a moment after the last person joins before really officially kicking off. How do you know when the last person joins? Oh, I'm I'm keeping I'm keeping an eye on the um, the participant list and the numbers. So right now we've got 25 people here. We have 
so many familiar names, and I'm actually happy to say a lot of names that are less familiar to me, which is awesome. I'm so, so happy about that. So let's get started in earnest. Um, I am Jack Haycock. I work for Pine Tree Legal Assistance. Um, I'm based in Bangor, Maine, but Pine Tree is a statewide legal aid organization serving the entire state of Maine. Um, and I'm here with Alex Clark. Alex, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm Alex Clark with uh, Metatheria, which is my consulting company. I'm a uh, attorney and software developer. Um, and I, some of you may know me as associated with the OCM PICA case management system. That's one of the software systems I work with, but I also do a lot of work with DocAssemble and with uh, Dialogflow chatbots. And I will get myself sharing my screen over here because we do actually even have a presentation. All right. All right, now hopefully you all now are seeing my screen and it is my presentation. All right, wonderful. So we are here to say hi to Moose. Um, and Moose is the name that we have given at Pine Tree Legal Assistance for our new chatbot friend. Um, but before we get into actually meeting Moose, um, a couple of meeting details. Um, the meeting is being recorded. Um, the recording will be available to anyone who would like it. Um, don't, don't be shy to reach out. Um, also, if you have questions, um, please feel free to pipe up and ask them. Um, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to jump in and answer the things that I can talk about. And um, Alex will hopefully be happy to jump in and answer the more technical details that um, he'll be much better at answering those questions. So. Why did we want moose? Why did we want a pet moose? Well, they're very cute and terribly, terribly underrated, I think. Um, and as you may have noticed from the previous slide, the moose also features prominently in Pine Tree's logo. Uh, but that wasn't the only reason we wanted to build the chatbot moose. Um, the big reason was that our community was constantly reaching out to us on Facebook Messenger. And we just do not have the staff capacity or the resources to respond to those messages in a timely manner um, or to really monitor that page around the clock. So for years, the solution that we had was an automated message that would just tell people to visit our website. Um, but there was really no way for us to effectively interact with clients that way. Um, and so the other issue was that other than browsing our website, there was no easy way for people to get super common questions about PTLA answered. Um, and these are the kinds of questions that people would ask over and over in Facebook messages um, or on Google answers, uh, Google maps even. Do you help with this particular kind of issue? Um, is your Machias office open on Wednesdays? Now, Google has gotten better at answering those types of questions over the years, um, but the do you help with is um, one of our most commonly asked and most misunderstood um, questions, unfortunately, and it's really important. Um, so those were some really big uh, reasons for us to want a chatbot. We wanted something that would be able to respond to users, be friendly, be helpful, um, and actually be available to them anytime, day or night, uh, to answer especially those most common and really critical questions about Pine Tree. Um, so what goes into making a moose? Um, and I mean, what goes into it, not just <clears throat> the technical uh, sense, but also what are kind of Pine Tree's own principles around this technology. Um, and so one of our key principles is access. Um, 
the whole reason we wanted to build the chatbot was hoping to expand people's ability to access our services um, by giving them one more way to access the information about us that is on our website and on the internet. Um, and I think it's important that both with Moose, our chatbot project, and with our triage and AI integration project that we also worked on this year, um, we never took any options away from the users. Um, so Moose isn't replacing um, an old FAQ sheet and our AI. Uh, it's also not replacing our site search. It's not replacing our browsing. It's just providing another way for people to access our materials. Um, we all know that people don't necessarily um, talk about their legal problems the same way, think about their legal problems the same way. Um, and so having, having an ability for users to ask a simple question um, and have a, a, friendly, um, a friendly response that uh, can at least simulate understanding what they're talking about and get them the information they need um, was key. Um, and that really ties in with utility as well. We want this to be something that is value added, right? That's not just, um, we built a chatbot for the sake of building a chatbot, isn't this cool? Um, we really want it to be, we set out to build this as something that is actually useful for people and can get them, can get them answers really quickly. Um, another principle that's really important to us with all of our technology projects, but I think even more so now as we're venturing into the wild world of artificial intelligence is transparency around what we're doing. Um, if you go to ptla.org, you'll notice the moose pop up in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And one of the very first things moose says is, hi, I'm moose, I'm a chat bot. Um, so it's right up front that Moose is not a real person. Moose cannot be your lawyer. Um, we also have directly um, in that first dialog box with Moose links to both our, our whole website privacy policy, but also a specific frequently asked questions page about Moose and about how what kind of information is collected and how it's used. Um, and all of that's written in plain language. Um, because we take we take these privacy concerns really seriously, and we want people to actually be able to meaningfully understand what their information is going to be used for, and what they're actually um, kind of signing up for if they choose to use Moose or our other AI tools. Um, one of our other uh, kind of leading tenets on this is friendliness. Uh, we wanted this chatbot to be not just uh, you know, a cold robotic assistant, um, but something that is fun to talk to. Um, technology can be fun and you know, legal problems aren't usually any fun at all, but that doesn't mean that hearing from a friendly toned voice um, isn't gonna help. And so some of the things that, um, and Alex can talk more in the specifics about including the um, kind of small talk uh, functions in Moose. But one other thing we did is we've programmed a few simple jokes into Moose. So if you ask Moose to tell you a joke, um, be prepared for some very uh, corny, um, silly jokes about Maine and Moose. They're, they're uh, dad, dad jokes about about mooses. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we found all these jokes ourselves, so there are very few people you can blame for that, other than me and Alex. <laughs> um, and something that I also I think this has come just from the five years that I've spent working on LSE TIG funded projects. Um, is we set out from the beginning for this to be what I like to call an evergreen project. Um, and that's clever and nice because we're pine tree. And so it's even uh, appropriately humorous for that. Um, 
But what I mean by that is it's a project that although we worked with Alex to build this chatbot, as far as making routine updates, um, if we need to change something like when the offices are open, um, or if we need to train uh, Moose on specific phrases, those are all things that I can do. Um, because we built, because we decided to build this chatbot in Dialogflow, um, which is, I think, at least in my experience, a very user-friendly, uh, quite easy to learn platform. Um, it, it's a platform that I poked around with building experimental little chatbots with a couple of years ago. Um, and from that experience, uh, I feel very comfortable um, editing Moose and training Moose um, and really doing that kind of um, routine upkeep. And that's something that um, I think can be a trap in some technology projects, a kind of a budgetary trap that you don't anticipate initially. If you end up having to go forward with um, either an expensive um, service contract for a piece of proprietary technology, um, or if there are things that you just can't update yourself um, and you're going to have to contract out that work anytime it needs to be done. Um, and so Moose, that is not a problem if we happen to pop up a new office in Rockland, no problem, I could add that office in and using, um, using the models that are already there for all the other offices, I could create, um, basically create the training and the script for Moose to recognize that new office and give that correct information. Um, so that's really what I mean by an evergreen project. Um, so, before I jump into some of the more technical um, parts on the kind of legal aid website end, does anyone have any questions about any of that? And we'll have time at the end too, if you wanna um, stick around for that. All right. Really, I was just stalling so I could get a drink. Um, so, the little bit more about the platforms and the process that we went through with building Moose. Um, I've given you a bit of the philosophy, but one thing that I want to make sure to mention is um, initially you may have noticed that I was talking about people messaging us on Facebook and that really being where, um, where users were asking us these questions. And so you may be asking yourself why don't we have our chatbot on Facebook? Um, it's actually very easy to deploy Dialogflow chatbots to Facebook. Um, that's not the problem. Um, as part of this grant, as part of this project, um, I did an awful lot of research on privacy protection and data collection on Facebook, and particularly within the context of Facebook Messenger and who basically who has access to that data, um, what can they use it for? Um, and, you know, it turns out there's a reason that you won't find any bank chat bots on there um, on Facebook Messenger. You may find some like retail kind of like customer service assistant type bots on Facebook, but you're not gonna be able to go on to a Facebook Messenger bot and, deposit a check into your bank account because um, it's not safe. Um, <laughs> Facebook, essentially, I, this is a gross oversimplification, but Facebook is sucking up all that data. Someone has access to that. Um, and while, you know, recognizing that we're building this on dialogue flow, and so Google does, there is access there as well, um, at least theoretically. Um, and that's something that we talk about in our um, frequently asked questions section um, for the privacy info on the chatbot and discourage users from sharing any personal information. Um, so identifying information like their name, um, details, uh, addresses, specifics like that. Um, but what we accomplished by not having the bot on Facebook is 
that conversation is not then linked to um, kind of their entire network of data on Facebook if they have a Facebook account. Um, so it's a little thing, um, but it was just, it didn't seem responsible um, for the kinds of messages that we got unsolicited on Facebook, which often contained a lot of personal information. It just didn't seem like a good idea from a privacy perspective for our users um, to make that the home of our chatbot. But luckily for us, um, Dialogflow also embeds very easily um, on a Drupal website. Um, so Pine Tree has for a long time um, been kind of an open source um, program, uh, much thanks to my predecessors, one of which is here, uh, Kathleen Caldwell and Hugh Calkins. Um, so Pine Tree, we have uh, all of our websites run on Drupal. Uh, PTLA.org is a Drupal 8 website right now. Um, and as I mentioned, Drupal and Dialogflow, it's a very easy integration. It's basically a code snippet in the header um, of the website and you're good to go. Um, was very easy. Um, and so both um, this project and most of our, you know, our website, they're on open source platforms. Um, and we do that intentionally. Um, Pine Tree has benefited and I have benefited so much over the years from the collaborations that we've been able to have with partners in the legal aid technology community who are using Drupal, who are using other open source technologies. We're starting to dabble in the world of DocAssemble now. Um, and it's just been such a, such a positive atmosphere for collaboration and for sharing um, the really great work that so many of us are doing out there. Um, and so with this project, I set out with the idea that this would be an open source project um, that would be built from the beginning to be really easy for other organizations to replicate, um, or at least model off of um, what we've done here with Moose. And so exactly having right. it in Dialogflow um, is uh, one big one big step in that direction. Jack, if um, I can interject, I. Uh... Yeah. I think I've thought for a long time that there's a natural uh, kind of harmony and affinity between uh, the idea of access to justice systems, public information systems that kind of democratize uh, justice and legal related information and make it available to everybody into the public. And a lot of the philosophy behind the open source movement and saying like, why would we want to close up and close off and restrict this useful information. So that's just something I've thought for a long time is that I, I think that um, open source software fits naturally and fits well within um, the ecosystem of. Yeah, absolutely. And that is that has certainly been our experience. Um, and so I'll, I'll touch briefly on user testing, um, just because this is kind of an interesting, um, an interesting case. Uh, this grant spanned uh, the pre-COVID world and the now world. Um, and so initially for um, other parts of the project, I was able to do some really in-depth in-person user testing. Um, I had a whole bulletin board, note cards, the whole nine yards. Um, but I could not do that. <laughs> um, I could not do that um, with testing Moose. Um, and so we had to get a little creative. Um, we looked at working from, um, I'm racking my brain for the name of the, there's a paid service you can use for user testing. Um, that we were looking at using or looking at using the free version of. But in the end, what we ended up doing is creating a Google Forms survey um, with a link at the end to enter a drawing um, for 
I'm trying again, I'm drawing a blank on the exact amounts of the gift cards, but we were giving away gift cards um, to entice people to um, help us with our digital user testing. And then um, so folks would get a gift card for testing. And then at the end, they would also be entered into a drawing for a larger gift card. Um, and so we were actually quite successfully able to recruit um, user testers that way. And one, um, one nice thing about a chatbot like this is testing and training uh, is constant. Um, and what I mean by that, uh, you'll, you'll see shortly. Um, but as people continue to interact with Moose, uh, it's, it's up to us to, um, to train Moose and to um, and to get Moose, uh, making sure that Moose is responding appropriately to what people are saying um, and that we're able to um, you know, make those corrections if there are things that we either miscalculated in the first place or if there are new issues that are emerging, um, we're able to adjust and actually make those training changes directly in the um, dialogue flow. Um, you call it platform. At any rate, at this point, I think I will turn it over to Alex. Sure. Um, so I just uh, I'm going to talk about some of the some of the features, things that it can do, uh, which Jack has touched on a bit already. Um, so one of the um, you know main things that it can do is uh, issue identification um, and direction to both on-site and off-site resources. So um, an example of something that it can do is somebody can start with a, um, a, a chat where they say something like, uh, I need to go to court for a divorce. And it can tell from that uh, that they probably have a family law issue and it'll ask to confirm. Um, and then if they say yes, the conversation continues on from there and it'll direct them to um, links either to specific pages with resources on Pine Tree's website or uh, to resources elsewhere on the internet as well. And so like in uh, the family law example, I think if I'm remembering right, Pine Tree doesn't do actually a lot of family law other than domestic violence related cases. I don't remember for sure, but there was, um, that was one where there was some, some direction to uh, some pages on other organizations, websites even. Um, so that's one of the things that it can do. And there's um, quite a few different intents. Um, and by intent, I mean, uh, literally it's, what it's getting at is, is what was the user intending like what was their topic or their or their thought and so it does that by looking for triggers and keywords um, within what the user types um, so that's uh, I think one of the most useful things it can do in, in primary purposes the the issue identification is all done um, using triggers and keywords and structure within the dialogue flow platform so there have been some other artificial intelligence um, projects within the legal aid space recently that involve uh, issue identification. Um, it, it, you know, uh, the, the big one being uh, the uh, uh, Suffolk Legal IT Lab um, spot issue identifier, which can help uh, identify, like drill down more narrowly to like the NSMI code even. Um, so this is this is more basic because it's just trying to help people find resources on a website. It's not necessarily trying to identify their exact legal issues. Um, it can also uh, identify, as Jack said, those common questions that they get constantly, like, are your services really free? What do you help with? What are your hours? Um, the geographic service area determination um, capabilities, the way that I did that was um, was so since since Maine is actually a uh, Maine's a pretty small state. There's <laughs> not a ton of counties and not a ton of cities. 
Um, so what I was actually able to do is I, I for their uh, six offices, um, I just went through, um, you know, the, the most significant cities that are actually incorporated cities and county names um, across their state. And I added all those into the appropriate offices. So if somebody says, I'm in Portland, Maine, um, you know, it knows which, which office that way. Um, if uh, Moose has a difficult time uh, identifying what somebody is talking about, you know, maybe they came in with a, with a language other than English and they're asking questions, or maybe somebody um, is just totally, uh, it just doesn't know what they mean. Um, after a few failed attempts, it gives them uh, kind of a menu of, of options to click on, of things that it knows about um, so that they don't just keep going in a circle. Um, it's mobile friendly. So this is um, something that I did that was uh, a little bit of custom code outside of, um, outside of the Dialogflow platform. So it can recognize when it is on uh, mobile. And when it's on mobile, the chat window, it's not just like the little lower right hand corner. It actually takes, you tap on it to open it and it takes up the whole phone screen. So you're not like trying to type in like this little corner of your phone screen. Um, and then again, uh, the small talk and jokes. The small talk is actually really important for, uh, it's not just fun, but it's really important for um, chatbots because uh, without uh, small talk intents, what will happen when you interact with the chatbot and you say something like, thanks, or that was great, the chatbot might respond with, sorry, I didn't understand that. So that's why you have to, with these, um, with these systems to provide a natural, um, a natural feeling uh, user experience, you have to program in some uh, small talk type of, uh, type of uh, responses so that it responds appropriately when people say things like, thank you. <laughs> yes, we want a nice polite chatbot, not a uh, poor confused one. Right. Um, so replication is uh, is pretty easy. If you want to just start playing with it, you can go to that address, and I think we can probably put it in the chat here yeah. too, or you can get it from the recording later. Um, and I have a zip file with the uh, the chatbot assets. Um, when you set up, when you create an account and get set up in the Dialogflow platform, make sure that you pick Dialogflow Essentials. There's something newer called Dialogflow CX, and, and that um, technology works a little bit differently. This is uh, Dialogflow ES, and you can start playing with this chatbot just by downloading that zip file from that address and then importing um, from the zip. Uh, licensing on this, uh, you know, Jack and I both feel strongly about um, open source, so the licensing is as open as possible. It's Creative Commons Zero, public domain dedication. You really just do what you want with it. Anything's cool. Um, if you if you decide to start uh, on a replication process, um, you will have to go through all of the responses and make sure that they point to URLs on your page and, and your organization's website and not on Pine Trees. We have uh, enough out-of-state traffic as it is. You don't is. want don't people uh, starting out <laughs> on, um, on, uh, on, on your organization and ending up in Maine. Um, I see a question about accessibility for assistive technology. Um, it should be it's screen reader compatible. I mean, it's common technology from, from, from Google. Um, there was a, uh, the, only, the only time that I used an image in the responses um, was basically uh, the chatbot can recognize for a few languages, like if somebody appears to be speaking like Spanish or French. Um, and what I did was if somebody appears to be speaking of Spanish or French, um, we have a, we have a, like a Spanish response that says, you know, sorry, you can't use the chatbot for this. Uh, and here's where you can go to translate the, the, ptla.org website has a little widget to translate the whole website. So there's a screenshot there that shows like, 
here's what to do. But other than that, it's all uh, than the like one picture. It's all text based. It should be compatible with JAWS or whatever. Um, uh, embedding and customizing the messenger takes um, a few more steps, like uh, to, for example, to make it appear nicely on mobile. Um, Pine Tree wanted me to have the uh, the chat window itself be a little bit wider than is standard for um, the way it looks when you embed it. Um, there are other integrations that are possible. So if you um, if you come to a different conclusion, for example, than uh, than than Pine Tree did about about Facebook, um, you it there's supported integrations for Facebook and WhatsApp and Kick. Um, there are also I've I've played with it and it's pretty cool. There's uh, telephone uh, voice voice integrations. Um, so you could have a system, for example, where maybe you um, you just use the issue identification uh, engine to provide people like canned advice over the phone. Um, so somebody could call up a number and start to describe a family law issue and it'd say, this sounds like family law. Do you want some basic information about family law? And then maybe it'd read off um, over the phone for them some generic information about family law. You just have to um, also keep in mind that with some of these integrations um, of this of dialogue flow into other platforms, not all of them are going to be appropriate for URLs in the response text. So you don't want a system where somebody calls a phone number and then it reads back to them, you know, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash on and on and on. Um, so uh, Let's see. that's, I mean, it, it's meant to be integrated, um, you know, pretty easily in a variety of, of, uh, of other systems. Um, like we said before, it cuts down on common questions. It can respond to questions at any time of day that people may be on their computer or on their phone. Um, as Jack said, also, it's not replacing anything. Um, it's just a supplement for ways to find information on an information rich website. Um, sometimes people, sometimes people may have a question and they don't even realize that this is a employment law question or they don't realize that this is a housing law question, but the bot may be able to recognize that based on keywords. Um, and you, another thing that you can do is you can use this, the history uh, logs um, that you see on the backside to gain some insight into the ways that clients um, frame their legal issues uh, and to further train it. So um, I'll give you I'll give you one example of something um, you know Pine Tree might think about we could add an intent for is I'm looking in the log of missed intents and there is one um, log where somebody asked the chat bot, hi, where can I play the game? And it and the bot didn't know what that means. Um, and then it says where, and then the user said, where can I play the game to prepare for an eviction hearing? And the bot actually did recognize that as being related to rental housing since it had the ev eviction keyword in there. But that's something that, you know, we could look at is, um, it sounds like I'm assuming there is such a game <laughs> on your website. Yes, of back. course, the, the bot doesn't know what the game is, but I know right. exactly what the game is. Right. And... So we, we could add a, <laughs> we could add an intent now to further train it that says, you know, if somebody says something about uh, about the game that they're talking about, this eviction court hearing game that's in a specific place on their website. <laughs> I think many people on this call know what the game is. <laughs> many people on this call worked on the game. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and it, and it does pretty good with. Um, I mean, if, if you if you ask it like a really long convoluted question, it'll get lost. But um, uh, I'm looking at, I don't want to, um, you know, expose anything that somebody read off something that's confidential from these logs. But um, I see one that's like, um, my son is is rent a room in a house. However, he went to jail on a PV violation. Can he be evicted? And it knew that was rental housing related. So, um, it 
it can give you uh, some some definitely some insights into ways that clients may uh, may frame and understand their own legal issues. Yeah, and for those of you who are um, kind of also in on the the spot uh, issue spotter game, um, so we're using Dialogflow for Moose, but we're also using uh, Spot, which is the legal issue spotter developed by the Suffolk Lit Lab that Alex mentioned mm -hmm. in our triage tool on the website for legal issue spotting. And something that I think we may actually be able to do is use phrases from Moose to turn that also into spot training data in addition to cool. Moose training data, um, which is already nicely integrated. Um, those are phrases that would also be um, very helpful. Um, and in fact, I bet there's a way we could download them that they become somewhat pre-labeled with um, the category at least that they, mm -hmm. uh, that it responded with um, to kind of speed up the data labeling process, which is always uh, a fun part of training AIs. So that's, that's another kind of interesting use for it that I'm looking towards the future to combine our AI efforts on. Uh, let's see. So I don't I know if we want to show off anything or I can, um, I can give a screen share to you, Alex, if you want. Um, sure. Um, so off. I'm happy to show off some things on the backside since I just see how do you edit the dialogue anytime. I also saw a question about, um, can it only be into group, you know, can it be only be integrated into Drupal 7? It's actually pretty independent. It can be integrated into Anything that'll give you any anything where you have some control over uh, over including something in the code. So if you if you're on WordPress, you know, and you and you have the ability to put a little snippet of code into the footer of every page, or you're on Drupal seven or eight, um, you know, anything where you have a little bit of a ability to put in a snippet of of uh, of JavaScript and a little bit of CSS in the header. Um, you can integrate this. Um, so let me, I'll share my screen. Um, I'll show editing a bit. So share screen. All right. So um, let me, let me see if I can make that a a little bit bigger too. Hopefully people can see. Um, so these are the base level uh, intents. Um, so for example, with bankruptcy, um, here are some of the keywords that we use for bankruptcy. Chapter 13, chapter seven, chapter 13 bankruptcy, bankrupt. And then the first follow-up is, it sounds like you're looking for information about bank bankruptcy, is that correct? And then there's um, there's follow-ups from that point. Um, let's look at the family. Um, that one's longer, we've got more phrases that we've added. Um, this is one that I added, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I went through some of the missed intents and some of the training information um, that somebody asked specifically about this PP209 form. Um, so I just went ahead and added it. Um, so we've got like four pages of, of keywords in here. And the, um, so the Dialogflow platform, um, you don't have to put like every permutation of a word in there for it to be able to recognize that word. Like that's that's part of the artificial intelligence nature of the system. So it will know based on son being in there, it'll know sons and it'll know daughters. Um, it'll know, you know, uh, and, and to add something, it's literally you just, um, you just add, like you type, and it won't let me add this, I think, because it's already there, or it'll be a duplicate. 
Um, so that's all you have to do. And then you hit save um, and it'll work for a minute and train and be done. Um, within history and training is where you would find your, um, your history of things that people entered without, uh, without it being able to understand. Um, it can hand okay, so it can handle, uh, I'm looking at the chats, it can handle some misspellings. Sometimes it has a harder time. Um, and yes, visit, so visit and visitation, it, you're right, it should be able to, but you also, I think I just added them as I was thinking of them. So that's probably just my bad that I, I put a duplicate in there. Um, but if, but generally, if it's this, if it's the exact same word, and I try to add it a second time, it, I think it doesn't let me add it. It'll just like show up, like as if it didn't add it. Um, so synonyms, uh, not probably not so much. Um, it's probably not intelligent enough to like, like in the thesaurus sense. Um, and I wonder if that would get us into some trouble with the legal, um, some of the legalese that we have to use right. sometimes it, too, with like whether certain right. legal terms of art are synonyms for really other more commonly used words. Jack, is it, so. is it all right if I switch to the training um, view since it has? Yes, some, I was just looking at that. Okay. Um, since it has, technically, it has text that's real from um, from users, but it's pretty it's pretty generic. Um, so uh, here's here's an example of what I would do to train something that it um, that it missed. Let me go to the next page. So um, uh, where I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, yeah. So if I wanted to um, say like. Because I think both the, there's a specific divorce um, intent, um, and there's a going questions about going to court intent. If I wanted to retrain this, and I'm not going to, because I think this is probably the better one than the divorce one, even though it mentions divorce. You click on it, and then I could come down here. And I didn't follow what you said. Siri thinks I'm talking to it. Sorry. <laughs> um, I could come down here to the family and I could click, um, I would click on it and then I would click approve and then it would retrain. So you don't have to, you don't have to like go through the history and like copy paste the things that people said by hand. You can go through the, um, in the training area this way. Let me see if I can find one that it got completely wrong. Um, well, I got that one right, rental housing. Um, yeah, I got that. Um, okay, so this one, I would say this one should have should have triggered like the consumer or debt one, um, since it has the word debt in it. It is a pretty complicated response, but I could come here and. Where's the consumer? There should be, because there's the consumer, yes, but there should be somewhere in here. Well, we also, we call it money, taxes, and debt on the website. Oh, that's right. So. That's, that's <laughs> what it is. That might be. Thank the, you. Uh, Thank you for reminding me. Um, it should, this should probably be money, taxes, and debt. So I hit approve. And then it starts training and it spins for a minute. Um, and that's and that's all you have to do. Yeah, and John um, so that um, makes it a asking little... if we tag the website content with the same intents or is it all one way? And let, it's let me dig let me dig down into yeah what that looks like when you actually get sent to um, the website. So um, all right, let me pick like a farm worker. Um, 
Yes. So there's different types of payloads. Um, if you want a rich payload that, uh, and a payload is just a response back to the user. If you want one that has like, like links in it and it's not just plain text, you have to do it in um, JSON format like this. That's what all these crazy brackets are about. Um, so it's it's just a um, they'll get they'll get a thing that has a link to that URL and that text, and they're also going to see before that they're going to see that text, and they're also going to see this text as well in the responses. So there's no like there's no like. AI based knowledge of like, oh, they have a farm worker issue and there's the farm worker intent to like, there's this page that's tagged that way. It's a little bit less high tech than that where literally we recognize the intent and then in the payload, I give them the link. Yeah, and in this case, um, this one makes a lot of sense because that's where ideally we would want anyone looking for farm worker information to end up before they started venturing out into, um, we, we actually just designed a nice new landing page for our farm worker unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's actually nice to be able to send, set these very intentionally for um, where, where we want to direct folks to. Are there any other, uh, any other questions? If not, I have, I have one more uh, like integration thing I could tell you all about if possible. Um, so something I, I'm working on for another organization um, is a chat bot that can launch a dialogue flow interview. Um, so let me find that. Um, and it, this is in testing phase right now. It'll be, it'll be integrated into their website. It won't be on a standalone site with a cheesy background like this. Um, but this organization, they wanted something to help people who want to, want to send like a reasonable accommodation request under like federal housing regulations to their landlord for an accommodation of a disability. Um, so what this bot can do is it can recognize um, different types of accommodations that people may, may need help with. So I can say like, um, can't get up the stairs anymore. Um, it confirms that it got the intent right, that it's related to the stairs. I said, yeah, um, they make sure that I'm renting, make sure that I have a disability, make sure that the landlord has four or more properties because that's important for the federal law. Um, and then it asks if there's a nexus between not being able to use the stairs and the disability. And can you get a letter from the provider? Then I click complete the form and the page gets replaced with uh, a very simple uh, doc assemble interview um, that's, that's based on at least having identified that they have a stairs or elevator mobility issue. Um, and then, uh, you know, I can pick what, what's a specific or I could fill in my own, you know, description of what I want. Um, it asks to describe the nexus, which, um, you know, I continue, and then I can get my document in PDF format with my generic advice and instructions, and then my information filled in it has my name and address and what I'm requesting, and then the proof of need letter. Oh, so we've got an audience question from Deborah Jacobs wondering, has this been used with translated content, e.g. Spanish? Um, dial dialogue flow, the, this, the pine tree chat bot, or what's, what's the I'm, first I'm not this? sure. Feel well, free to um, unmute yourself and. Uh... So I'll, I think I'll, assuming that we're just talking about dialogue flow, um, the project in Maine, we did not target doing it in multiple languages, but it's possible to have a chatbot in additional languages. And there are um, 
some tools to do so. And like starting with a already developed, um, already developed chat bot, um, uh, we could we could add more languages um, and start building it out. Um, but it would take you know we'd have to translate our content, translate our triggers, think about all of that. Um, but but I mean, basic answer is that you could you could build a dialogue flow chat bot in a language other than English as well. Oh, so kind of building off now, I have a question, Alex. Um, sure. That maybe maybe you know the answer to this. So does dialogue flow have then um, basically Spanish small talk, French small talk built out? And now now I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, let me. Um, I don't want to mess up your agent. Um, <laughs> Give it a second to create a new agent. Um, oh, I should have, should have probably. It's probably too late now. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know the answer to your question. I suspect that it's probably that it probably does, but I don't. I don't know for sure, John. Okay. I was just, I just got curious. Yeah. Uh -huh. John has just um, dropped a helpful link uh, about multilingual agents and dialogue flow. By the way, if you, um, if you want to use the pre-made small talk um, for a dialogue flow agent, um, there's a trick to it. Google won't let you do it. Um, like just generically import all of the small talk. You have to, you have to basically export it and then import it, or else, it, for for some reason, I don't quite fully know why um, they don't want you to do it. And then you you can go in and you customize your um, your small talk. So, for example, when we customized the canned um, small talk responses for Moose, there were some responses that um, I think were were probably too too lighthearted or or not serious enough for like some of the situations that people may find themselves in. So there were some certain things that we we removed. Yeah. Well, we have uh, so any for, other questions? Yeah. Anyone anyone feel free to um, you can use the chat or also feel free to unmute yourself and uh, happy to have a discussion. We have a few more minutes here. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen then. I say, back everyone's, you, everyone's gotten all shy on us, but um, ooh, all right. How many total intents? Okay, so how many total intents do we have in Moose? And also, how much are people using it compared to other methods of getting info on our site? So I know. Um, let's see. What's this? The statistic on our site search, um, and for those of you who have done site search work, uh, you may already know this. Um, we have like one to two percent of users who use our site search. Um, we have a lot of site users, though. So Moose, I'm a little. I'll be honest. I'm a little confounded by the analytics because a lot of the um, and Alex, you can probably help me with this. A lot of them. Um, basically the way we have it configured, the moose window appears and right. that counts as it, it appears automatically whenever, when a page is loaded. Um, and so right. that counts technically as a, as an instance of moose being used. And that's not an accurate reflection of the actual usage of moose. Um, but looking at so the training data, a lot of people are using it and seem to be getting pretty darn good results. So yeah, a lot of people are using it. Um, I, I don't have a great way to quantify it, but I'll say that when I started going through the training data, like I think my intention or I told Jack I was going to do two weeks of it and I, was, I started doing it. I was like, wow, this is a lot. <laughs> people are using uh, this a lot for me to go through two weeks of it. Um, 
So I didn't get through a whole full two weeks. I think I got, you know, probably through four or five days. Um, so people are using it a lot. Um, it does it as you as you said every time because the, because the um, the embedded web messenger basically starts a conversation every time you load the page. There's a lot of conversations that are there's just one message and it's from Moose. Um, but if you look at the training data, you can still tell that like it's being used quite a lot, um, and it's being used I think mostly for the things that you know it's intended for. It seems like people are you know, finding use for it and they're preferring to use it over the site search. So I, I think that's all great. Um, in terms of how many intents there are, there are a lot, um, not even, not counting the small talk ones that are imported. Um, I think there's 25 or 30 like base level uh, intents, but then every one of those intents has at least, you know, like one or two follow-ups to confirm that you got it right. And those are also considered intents, even though they're like just asking yes or no. Um, so I don't know, less than 50, more than 30. And now I get to answer possibly my favorite question, um, from Wilson. How much, uh, does this cost on average monthly for Moose slash Dialogflow? I am so very happy to tell you it's free. <laughs> it costs us, um, the, the monthly upkeep cost is my time. Um, the initial cost, um, I'm the financial side of things is not particularly my my wheelhouse or my strong suit um but we contracted with Alex initially um and Alex is providing a year of support for us um on this kind of initial uh run of moose um but as far as ongoing costs to dialogue flow or ongoing costs for hosting moose or running moose there are no there, ongoing costs there um, there are costs that are very small that are associated like if you go over a certain usage tier of interactions and I'm not sure where that is and I don't know that you've even hit it. Um, one of the, uh, you know, and, it, and it's, I don't remember exactly what it is, but whatever it is, it's, it's cheap because it's, you know, a cloud cloud based chat service. Um, one of the things though, just to be aware if anybody gets really into uh, into dialogue flow and you start looking at that dialogue flow CX, like which is the newer, more advanced platform that's based on something called a, a finite state machine, which I don't know what that means. Um, dialogue flow CX is significantly more expensive than dialogue flow ES, which is what this is built on. So just that's something to be aware of. Yeah. And I will say Pine Tree Legal Assistance is a very um we have a lot of traffic to our website. We're a very, very high volume site, uh, about 20,000 visitors a week. Um, and so we're not, I, I will say, I can confidently say we have not yet run into any issues um, with overuse of Moose uh, or any running into any issues with that causing a- There's no, I'll say, I think that there's no, there's no, like monthly base cost to have a dialogue flow uh, agent like active. The costs, if to the extent that there really are any that you would hit, it's all based on the num like those numbers of interactions. Gotcha. And I and there is a free like threshold. Have you um, you were talking about getting a lot of visitors not from Maine or people who don't have legal issues in Maine? Would you think about putting something a message in Moose? about have you already done that did one. i miss that you did okay we have we one we, we have one called it, other states uh, but we did do that yeah and it uh it can take priority so there's most of the intents have the same level of priority and then there's a couple there's just like two that we have like a higher a higher level of um like importance and priority so even if somebody says i have a rental housing issue if they say I live in Iowa and I have a rental housing issue. Instead of matching the rental housing intent, it should match the other state's intent. And, tell, and it tells them, uh, you mentioned non-main state, so it can recognize the, like, the entity, like which state they mentioned. Um, you mentioned non-main state, 
Iowa or whatever. Unfortunately, we can only help with legal issues that are connected to Maine in some way. To find a legal aid organization in your area, visit lsc.gov and then the find a legal aid URL. Yeah, that is our perpetual problem, Caroline. And so that was um, that was on my list of things that Moose needed to know. <laughs> Well, great. I think we're we're at time. We've taken up enough of your Friday afternoon. Um, thank you all so much for um, for joining us. And um, if you have any questions, I shared our slide deck in the chat. Uh, both of our email addresses, our contact information is there. Feel free to reach out. Um, I think I speak for us both when I say we'd be happy to talk about the project, happy to talk about uh, replication, our experience Definitely. with any of that. Um, and it's great to see so many familiar faces and familiar names and to see so many new folks too. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Yes, thank you. All right, bye everyone. <laughs>